we can now move on a kind of neural network that at the end is not so much different than uh, a feed forward neural network that are convolutional neural networks. So as uh, we said uh, in general for neural networks, let's go in first to 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 look on why we are uh, we need we need these. So these, as I said, they are uh, essentially feed forward neural networks with the difference that uh, some layers are uh, of uh, convolutional types and uh, they are very good in uh, recognizing uh, patterns where data has many dimensions and we can uh, think on uh, special data or images to data where each pixel is a dimension so in uh, these cases uh, we will have a uh, uh, thousand and a uh, thousand of dimensions so one per pixel and uh, we could still use uh, normal uh, um, normal uh, um, feed forward networks but uh, convolutional neural networks have at least two big uh, advantages in, in this case the first one is that they would require many less parameters, many fewer parameters. So the way convolutional uh, layers are made are made of uh, sm very small filters or we call kernels that typically are three by three, five by five, sometimes time by time, but not bigger than that. And uh, these filters cross and we'll see across the image so they move across the image but the important is that they are associated only to the weight the, the weight remain fixed so a five by five filter has only five by five weights instead if we take a medium resolution image of 1000 by 1000 so we have 10 uh, 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 at the 6 uh, uh, rather to the 6 of pixels. If we have this one for the input and the output and we want to use a dense layer here, well, we're starting to have 10 rather to 12 uh, weights and it's not really a number we can easily manage. Instead, a filter, a single uh, uh, filter, would have, uh, if it's 5 by 5, it would have uh, just uh, uh, 25 weights. Then it's true that a layer is made of several filters, so if there are 10 filters, there will be 10 by 25, but still it's not the same order of magnitude of a dense layer. So this is one of the advantages. The second advantage is that because of how they, they work making the, the convolution in the image, what they learn it doesn't really depend on where is it in the image. Well, if we would use a uh, dense layers and uh, if, for example, all our training data has a, here I make an example of a car is uh, in the bottom or uh, half of the image, and then we have a car in another position on the top, this will not be recognized because it has not been learned to be a car uh, in that position. Instead, convolutional networks, they manage to learn independently of where the future features are in the image. So how does convolutional networks uh, work more, uh, more in particularly, more precisely? So we have that the layer, uh, the convolutional layer L is obtained operating again over the previous layer that in, in this case is an image, can be something else, but let's consider uh, it must be a matrix, but let's consider it to be an image to, to, simplify, to simplify. So it works with a small filter, a slide across the image with some step. Here in this, uh, in this figure, we have a step of one. So first here, then uh, here, then uh, here but it could be a step of two. So it could be this one and then the red directly bypassing the yellow one. So uh, the, the step is called stride and the process of sliding the filter is mathematically a, a convolution. So when we slide this, uh, this, uh, this uh, filter at each location, 
we will have one output that is similarly to uh, a dense layer. It's made by the dot product of the weights of the filter that multiply the value on the relative position. So let's consider here uh, the filter at the position uh, uh, one one. This green filter here is uh, uh, is made by the dot product of its weights. So this will, because it's a two by two, will have four weights uh, w one 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 two two one and two two plus one for the bias. And these weights here multiply the input at the relevant position. And all this one then, as for uh, the dense layer, become the argument of uh, an activation function, typically is used the ReLU function. So here is for the green one. When we move the filter here, we have an output here. And what is important is that while the input change, the weights here are the same. So the weights are a characteristics of the filter, while the input is slided and uh, depend on which position the filter is. And uh, so notice as well that this is the dot product, this is not a matrix uh, product, it's the combinations of uh, the multiplications of the weights of the filter with the input at the position where the filter is. And of course, the same for the third red filter here. Actually, the filter is, one, is the same for the third position where the filter is. So let's make an application, numerical application. Let's consider this matrix X, this matrix here. And let's consider that the current weights are, uh, are this one. So we have a three by three filter. So first it will be this here and then we slide it. It doesn't matter uh, horizontally, vertically. So can you stop a little bit the uh, the video and uh, look uh, and try to find uh, the value of the filter by yourself and uh, this use the uh, let's assume that it's used the RLU uh, activation function so for example here so this is the the, the output and we, the this uh, uh, this uh, value here what is it this is the application of this filter here over the area um, here because this is the first one so this is the output the this the this one here is the output of six this one here is the output of five and this here is the output of minus two so here we multiply four one 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 two two one 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 by one minus two zero one zero one minus one one zero when we sum all these uh, uh, multiplications uh, we find uh, uh, the value of uh, of five and because five is positive it remains five while all the negative become uh, become zero so again we can uh, this is very easy to implement in uh, in Julia so this is X, this is the weight, and uh, uh, using this uh, um, list comprehension, we can obtain the value at each position and then apply the ReLU function and reshape uh, correctly. I invite you to, to try, I don't know why here I don't have the output. You can notice here that uh, while we started with uh, a five by five. By applying this filter, we end up with an output that is smaller. And of course, this is because it, the filter takes some, some, uh, some, uh, some space and uh, it, can, it has only one, two and three possibilities for each, uh, uh, for each uh, column. For, for the horizontal dimension and the same for the vertical dimension. So uh, 
these reductions depend on the dimension of the filter but of course also on the stride if i increase the stride the the the, the, the number of column between uh, one step and the other i reduce the uh, the dimension uh, further and sometimes i don't want this one i want to keep the same dimension across several layers and so what can i do well I can do the most simple things that is padding this initial layer and because I want to this padding to not contribute uh, uh, any value because at the end I don't know what there is in this padding I put zero so if I put zero when I do the dot product this will not contribute anything so a technique to keep the same uh, dimension in the output is to first pad the input layer with some zeros and then apply here with uh, some padded value and, and the true value till you get the number of uh, uh, output equal to the number of the true number uh, in, in the input. So here I have a small, uh, um, small formulate formula um, that give you the output of uh, the layer uh, given the input size and uh, the filter size and uh, the stride and eventually the, the padding. So if we want to, uh, um, in, the, in this case, to apply to this case, here we have a five. So the input is five. We don't have padding. The filter is, uh, is, uh, is a free. Uh, so here we have one plus uh, one plus uh, uh, sorry one plus uh, five uh, uh, minus uh, uh, three uh, divided by one and the result is three as it should be and uh, from this formula you can find also if you want to keep the dimension the number of padding that you need to put to keep uh, the, the dimension of the, the size of the image uh, constant. And as we said, because uh, uh, the weights are uh, uh, the same of the filter across the image, it doesn't really matter where the object is learned, where it is in the image, it will be still learned. And uh, this property has a name, and this translational invariance, and uh, uh, the, it will be learned the, the image, the, the future, future wh wherever it is. Still, it's sometimes uh, uh, more convenient to make some what's called a data augmentations to the training set. That is it, we have a, a set of uh, 10 uh, images. Let's go into change them uh, slightly to uh, to add uh, some rotation or to mirror them or uh, uh, to do other transformations and use also this for the training uh, uh, set so in this way for example uh, with the captcha uh, that is used to in the image uh, recognition it doesn't matter if uh, i write it uh, my number a little bit uh, or my letter a little bit uh, slanted uh, I, the algorithm uh, will still uh, uh, find it uh, correctly. The algorithm, of course, against the capture.